Ciao. Ciao. Ciao ragazzi, welcome back to our channel. So now that this year has begun its descent mm -hmm. and we're entering winter, what was the best moment of your summer? I think starting this YouTube channel was the best moment of our year, of my year. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend that that's not mildly offensive. <laughs> I don't know, we did so many nice things. You only love me for YouTube, Justo. Yeah. You should say that like something very terrible happened to you this week. Yeah. And if you want to know why, well, watch this vlog because we're going to talk about it. Something awful happened to me this week and if you want to know more, keep watching. We are going to go to a nice little what would you call this place? Youth Center space? Yes. Work on my thesis a bit. Question mark, question mark has some work to do. And we'll sit there and work for a while. Probably run into a friend as you do there. There is this in the house. <laughs> Ciao. Walk around Festivita a bit. And yeah, enjoy this nice weather. Enjoy each other's company as always. And show you Rome. Yeah. Don't forget that we're living in beautiful Rome. It certainly is. And I feel like with this channel, we're like... Rediscovering Rome for ourselves too, I think. That's true. Yeah. Yo, question mark, question mark is poetic today. Because, well, watch this, watch this. I feel like Rome is the onion and this channel is the peeler. We are peeling back layers and layers with each video to sort of give you guys a well-rounded... It might make you cry, but it's worth it. Because onions are freaking good. I don't know if any of our viewers like to read. If you're interested in book content, then let us know and we can make some of that as well. I don't know if anyone's read this. It's the third of her trilogy of memoirs. I love Mary Carr. Her books speak to me the way that she writes speaks to me and I would recommend that anyone who maybe sometimes feels cramped by conventional writing styles, conventional technique, check out her first memoir which is probably by far the most outstanding memoir I've ever read which is The Liars Club. I'm really enjoying this one. The second one wasn't my favorite but in any case the way that she writes has given me an entirely new perspective on how to write myself and how I can feel more comfortable writing in a way that doesn't necessarily conform, conform to the conventional writing techniques that I was taught to use in school and in university. Daisy, do you like flowers? I need to tell you guys, question mark, question mark, is the flower queen? I don't think she's missed a week. And since we've known each other, like, I've always had fresh flowers and it's because of her. And I would say like, get you a, get you a girl like that, but I don't think that there's any other like that. Cartina Bianca. Okay. Um, we, we've said it once, we'll say it again. Never give up on your dreams. Uh, this is our biggest sponsor so far. Thank you to the Italian Lottery for sponsoring our channel. Always giving us hope yeah. when we feel like there is none. And uh, fingers crossed and you guys will you'll see what happens. So I'm going to be honest, guys. Sometimes it might just be best to give up on your dreams. These no, days. I don't feel that way. Oh. How do you get used to slash become okay with people seeing you film in public? Oh, it's... I feel terrible. Do you really? Yeah. I feel like you take it more in stride than I can. Just because when I see a person who's more scared or struggling more, I get a little bit more confident. <laughs> so like because I'm there, yeah. it gives you more confidence. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Film that lady. Yo. I'm being rude as hell. We're on our way to study. 
I'm on my way to study. I'm on my way to distract Daisy from studying. <laughs> That's her specialty. Um, and I wanted to say it is 4 p.m. Oh. Oi. We are here. Oh. There is this in the house. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Welcome to Talib. This is the CEO of Talib. You know that like dream? Have you seen this man in your dreams? We should do this in the style of one of those Netflix documentaries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't make that, that much of a joke about it because it was kind of sad, but on Monday I was walking to work at the university. I am a TA for a course, so I was walking to TA the course. As I was walking to university, I was stopped by a man who was holding and walking with his road bike and he stopped me and asked me where the nearest park was that he could go to ride his bike and told me that, continued to tell me that on Sunday there would be an event in the city center with Red Bull and sponsor <laughs> Red Bull and that he was a professional cyclist and blah, blah, blah. And already at the time of telling me all of these events, I sort of thought to myself that I didn't really have time for this because I was running late to work. I told him where the nearest park was and mind you, he spoke very broken Italian and spoke a sort of Spanish-Italian mix. I figured he was, um, actually he, he looked to be of South American descent, South American origins. So, God said don't make presumptions, <laughs> but considering that he was speaking Spanish and a bit of Italian, I figured. Spanish and Italian are kind of similar, so we were doing our best to sort of communicate. I told him where the park was in Italian, and he continued to tell me about this event and asked me if I would um, sort of disperse these flyers around my university so people would be aware of the event. I told him, sure, no problem. He calls his friend, and his friend says that she's gonna bring down 20 flyers and that's that. So then I'm waiting, sitting there talking to him, and he asked me to show him the directions to the park on my phone because he didn't really understand. And I open my phone, pull up the directions. He takes my phone out of my hands and speeds off with my phone on the bike. All of that to say that my phone was stolen and that in and of itself is all right, alone. A phone is not the most dispensable material item, but I am very bad with breaking phones, losing phones. I'm pretty good at not being very attached to my phone, but in any case, the worst part of it was he had seen me put in my pin, and so he had access to my phone and was able to get in and immediately disconnect it from my Apple ID. I was also just really shaken to imagine that he had access to all of my photos, all of my notes, all of everything that I wasn't able to immediately disconnect from my, from my computer, from my iCloud. So, this is the second time my phone's been stolen. He, I found this to be a very unsuspecting situation because he was on such a nice road bike. I don't know, is that fair enough reason to assume that someone's not gonna rob you because... I think any reason is, like, no one should rob you in the street. That's true. It should not be reason to be aware all the time. I think the, the thing that made it even more unsuspecting was also that I live in a very residential neighborhood and this happened in broad daylight right in that neighborhood and I was a bit embarrassed after because I was honestly too stunned to, to react in any sort of quick way because I didn't realize what was happening when he stole my phone because he sat there and talked to me for so long. I, for some reason, had this idea in my head that he was gonna turn around and bring it back. Which brings me to the next point that I think is very sad about this situation and that is that every time something like this happens to me, which be it that my phone is stolen, 
I mean, not to be like too graphic, but I've been sexually assaulted here on public transportation and any sort of situation in which I feel I was taken advantage of, I typically feel immediately inclined to be less nice out in the world. And that's sad because I like being nice. I like being kind. I don't want to be so shelled off to the world, but I know that this situation was an instance in which I thought to myself at a certain point, I have to go. I cannot sit here and keep talking to him. I should have just gone. But I do believe that especially women are sort of um, raised, be it by their parents or by society at large, in such a way that encourages us to not break character and continue to be polite, even sometimes to our own detriment. Um, yeah, I don't really know what the, what the solution is except maybe to try to cultivate a stronger relationship or a stronger sensitivity to my intuition and when something feels wrong rather than neglecting that voice uh, for the sake of being nice, listening to that and, and honoring that enough to say I have to go enough to walk away, enough to even be rude if that's what's solicited. So that, that's that. Yeah, but I think it's important to know that like if someone wants to rob you, they will rob you. Yeah. And you cannot do anything usually because like afterwards it kind of puts a little bit of guilt on you that like, oh, I could have, I could have do something about it. No, like you're in a terrifying, stressing situation and any reaction you have is normal. I've never been robbed, but a lot of my friends been and like I saw the reaction they had and the first reaction usually and first thoughts are like I could have, like I, I felt that something is wrong, I, I could have do something. No, you got robbed, that's it. That's so true. I think question mark touches on a really good point because there was a time in Rome a couple of years ago where a man put his hand in between my legs when I was on the bus. And I had been in conversation with this man. He had actually approached me to like hold an umbrella outside the bus stop for me because it was raining. And then he got on the same bus and he just kind of kept inching closer and closer and closer. But to be honest, this man was probably 90. I didn't assume that he had any sort of bad intentions at all. So when this happened, I was so shocked. But immediately I sort of internalized it as my fault for not, not recognizing his intentions or for not somehow departing from the situation earlier but ultimately I feel like that is also a product of the way that women are raised um, to internalize guilt or to to even sort of gaslight yourself into thinking that something is your fault because you didn't listen to your intuition when ultimately obviously it's not your fault the person that is like the perpetrator it's their fault <laughs> how is it my fault that someone wanted to steal my phone and, and you add on top of that, this sort of internalizing guilt and feeling like something is your fault, I think is much more prevalent amongst women. The same way that theft, like that women fall more often victim to theft, sexual assault, any sort of harassment in the street, any sort of thing. It's so interesting that not only do we have a tendency to gaslight ourselves into thinking that things are our fault, moreover, we often, more often, fall victim to situations in which we then gaslight ourselves. It's not cool. If you're the guy that stole my phone and you're watching this, you might not want to hear this, but I forgive you. I feel like you're, if you're in a desperate enough situation that your heart has like become so callous that even towards like nice people you're willing to commit mean acts, then that's a lot more tragic. I'm happy that I don't have to do that happy that I don't feel inclined and I'm sorry for those that do yeah I know like one more phone stolen and I might have to turn around and start stealing other people's phones we'll see guys like oh, ciao. <laughs> hello ciao ciao ragazzi yeah Marco now you know if you did famoso su per l'americano su YouTube uh, I told them how I was robbed okay because because I don't know why I've spoken like ta I'm here with my mate Marwan my mate <laughs> I do. Come, mate.
Oh. E stai messi quelli buoni, capito? Esatto, la dolcezza dell'estremismo. E il gayismo. What are you working on? Mm, I'm gonna start working on my thesis, which is a, a source of great stress in my life right now. So the more that I can get hacked away, the better. productive today? I don't know. Were you productive? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you were ready. Yeah. I was editing this vlog, mm -hmm. which you guys will see on Sunday. Ciao. Volevo chiedere che c'è qui dentro. Quindi è vegetariano. Sì. Prendo un pezzo di questo. Poi un pezzo di questa. You should definitely lie and say you're a student at John Cabot to get a discount. Ma parli in italiano molto bene. Grazie. Il mio ex ragazzo è italiano. Questa è la mia preferita ex di Daisy. 